So the next thing that we have to look at are the oppositions. So oppositions, as I mentioned, are two planets that are just like the name, the name says, opposing one another. Think of it as the furthest the two things can be away from each other. Think of it as a tug of war. These are two planets that force you to flip-flop, very zero to 100. So this person has four oppositions. Neptune, Jupiter. Here's Neptune, here's Jupiter. So you see it's like a full stretch, a full tug of war. Neptune is the planet of the underworld, not the underworld, I'm sorry, the, the bottom of the ocean. And Jupiter is the planet of the skies. So you can see that this person is going to flip-flop, especially in the house one and seven, where is them and the other, them and the other. Who goes first? Who matters more? Is it me? Is it them? Is it me? Is it them? There's going to be a lot of zero to 100 here between themselves and the other person. The other opposition that they have is Uranus-Saturn. So we have Uranus and Saturn. Now I mentioned before that one of the big things that we do in astrology is find patterns and repetition. Okay, so I mentioned that you have a little bit of chaos, not so little, but quite a bit, with Black Moon Uranus. And now this is going to reconfirm and reaffirm that this person that, uh, bounces back from chaos and structure, from chaos and order, because Uranus is chaos, Saturn is order and it's in the 410. So that's gonna be the 410 axis. Every house has an opposite house, and those are called axis. The 410 axis has to do with the work-life balance, so the four, fourth being home, the 10th being work or profession, and it also has to do with the parents. So this is person who perhaps was told by mom, let's be fun and liberal, and then dad might have been a hardcore Republican or a conservative, and then they flip-flop. And if, if the person, let's say, comes from a divorced home, they might have had pasta and cookies and sugar every night at their one parent's house, and at the other house they had to have their vegetables. So you can see how this can create some sort of flip-flopping and disorder or chaos and, and disorder on one side of their life, and then the longing for rules and order and structure in another. So this is going to be very similar to this. There's gonna be a tendency for chaos and creating freedom, but really what they're trying to do is get stability. They just don't know how to do it. So maybe work will be one of the ways where they create stability or at home because they have the root of Saturn in there. The other opposition that they have is Chiron opposite Moon. What I want you to pay attention to is when you see a planet that is compromised over and over, like we saw two uh, squares with black moon, we know that that's going to be an integral theme. We saw Scorpio in the ascendant, we saw Pluto in the myth, and we saw eighth house. So there's a strong Scorpio, there's a strong Plutonian um, issue here. It happens to be, no coincidence, that the black moon rules Scorpio. So we are seeing a big, big Scorpio theme as a result of this. So when you see patterns over and over, you need to make attention, pay attention to those houses, to those cusps, and to the meaning of that archetype because it's going to be extremely important in the person's psyche. Okay, so here we have Chiron opposite Moon. And if you remember, we already saw Moon square Mercury. So now the Moon is being compromised. So we have Chiron opposite the Moon. This is going to be someone who's going to fluctuate their emotions. They might be someone who's in a consistent victim state when it comes to emotional distress. It could be that they lost their parent or a loved one or a very important woman or a very important woman um, you know, hurt them at a very young age and they perpetuate this. So um, it could be because Mercury is involved, like I said before, that their wound has to do with their speaking, fifth chakra, we already said that Pluto um, rules the fifth chakra, so we're seeing this area of the voice, of hiding, of you know maybe perhaps speaking out, especially with all the mutable cross. So you start seeing the story unfold. There's nothing that you do, you just let the story unfold for itself. And then the fourth um, opposition that they have is black moon and what we call the white moon. No, Mars, I'm sorry. The Black Moon, Mars. Black Moon and Mars are two very violent planets. Together, they have a very sexual energy, but it could be a sexual energy that's violent. 
it could be a sexual energy that has to do more with like a BDSM or an SNM type of, of lifestyle and that's okay you ask the client there's no judgment if the client does not have an issue with something it is not a problem keep your judgments out of it so because it's an opposition there might be a problem and because there's an eighth house sun because there's a lot of planets that are linked to pluto and scorpio because pluto is conjunct um the moon because pluto is conjunct uranus there could be a lot of liberty and chaos and sexuality and openness but it could be as a thinking of the word in Spanish, that it's, it's, um, that it's causing a conflict or a mental disturbance in the person and that they're not comfortable with it. I have many clients that are in BDSM or they have, they're swingers or they have, or, and it causes no problems. It's all over their chart, but they have no issue with it. I have one client that wants to open a sex dungeon. Go right ahead. If it does not create conflict in the client's life, that would be with trines and sex styles, not squares and oppositions. Squares and oppositions mean that they do have a client a conflict, even if the client is telling you otherwise. I'm telling you the chart speaks, not the client. But if they don't have a problem with it, it's none of your business. Keep your judgments to yourself. It's not a problem. This is a problem. This black moon Mars, it could also be displayed not only sexually, I use a sexual um, example because there's so much Pluto and Scorpio in the chart, but it could be that there's a violence, that there's a lot of anger, and it could have been that they saw this in their parents' marriage or they saw this at home because the seventh house is the house of marriage. So that sort of violence um, that can even lead to a depression or a, a bipolar or manic type of depression is um, relevant. And then I mentioned that the conjunctions can be either or. This particular set of conjunctions, when three planets are together, they're called a stellium, three or more. Um, and then you have two conjuncts. You have black moon, I mean, you have moon Pluto and Pluto Uranus. Um, those are very hard aspects. They're very intense. Um, there could be a need for sexual liberty. There can be a need for unstable relationships. There can be a need for abrupt endings um, because they don't want to get too grounded or they don't want to get too stable with someone. Okay? Um, so that's going to be, in a nutshell, the person in their chart. Now I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to discuss a little bit about the transits. Give me a second, please. <laughs> 